Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. Before we get started in today's video, I want to let you guys know that I'm, I want to do a YouTube live on uh, Thursday. I think it'll be around 5 uh, p.m. Central Time. That's Missouri time, South of Missouri. That's 5 o'clock. So I want to do a, a YouTube live. You know, I get live on YouTube and then you guys uh, ask me questions, anything about farming, about me, just any random questions. So I want to let you guys know that I want to do that. So, but for today, I'm gonna come through and uh, main, uh, pretty much maintain the high density orchard. I'm gonna show you guys how to exactly how to do that. Got to kill some weeds and stuff. So that's the plan for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead hit that subscribe button, like this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the little bell notification bell. Come come to you guys three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And uh, you guys say stay tuned for today's video because we're maintaining the high density apples. in today's video i want to let you guys know that i'm kind of upset but kind of excited at the same time and the reason i am upset is because today is my last day of being 21 and the exciting part is my birthday is tomorrow so by the time you guys even see this video august 13th i'll be 22 years old that's the exciting part because i'm growing older and i got a bunch of big bu bunch of big plans for the future and you guys are going to be there and staying along for the ride Alrighty, so first thing is first, I want to come through and kill off these weeds. The weed killer that we do use, it, it only kills what's green. And um, as you guys can see, the grass is starting to grow back and we don't want that. We don't want to get out of control. So I'm coming through today and hopefully I can do all nine rows here and just come through and just spot, spot killing. So I never come see, see the weed, just come through and spray them. And then another thing I'm going to come do is uh, any growth underneath uh, the bottom wire here. I'm going to go ahead and chop it off all this new growth, probably with the pruners or even by hand. Just come through and chop it off any dead limbs here so just come through and maintain it and make sure it's all ready to go this row i don't know for some reason super bad but it's, you know they're not super bad but if you don't get on top of it now it's never going to get into control and i want to show you guys here this is the new growth here since this year so that's a good a foot foot of new growth so these are the jonathan apples here and this looks like fire blight or something probably just from the leaves or something just starting to or pay me from that this is probably uh, from the cedar apple rust. The leaves are drying off, but look how healthy new, good these new leaves are looking. So gonna come through here, kill the weeds, and then got the hand pruners gonna cut off the bad stuff and getting stuff done. Alrighty, so what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of spot treating the weeds that have grown, such like this. And so some of these I gotta be careful because they're starting to get new shoots up on the bottom. And Gotta come through and make sure because if you do hit the green wood with uh, or anything green with the uh, weed killer, it's gonna kill it. So, gotta make sure there's no new growth like that one right there. New growth there, so I won't kill the tree. That's why we have the shield, as you guys saw in my previous videos, prevent drip from hitting the tree, like right here. As you guys can see here, I don't want that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And the next plan here is that we're gonna get some white latex paint and come through and scrub. Oh, sorry about that come scrub the white latex paint on the bottom of the of the trees there so prevent the buds from budding out into new growth so it's coming through and usually just around the trees here just kind of do that right there and that's it saving chemical saving time just like that boom 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 so here's here's a baby tree that sprouted up from the from the new shoot there so what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna find out which go like that and save the tree and it seems it seems to be going pretty quick here's another example so getting it done so here's an example of a tree that didn't I mean whenever we planted the main stem didn't grow and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get one leader up to the top of the tree so I'm gonna find out which one I want here, which one's the closest. So this one probably, or so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna save this one right here, cut the rest of these out, and let the rest of the energy go to this one. So hopefully when it touches the bottom bottom wire, we're just gonna take that and make it grow up straight up. So got the fancy hand pruners again here and just cleaning up the trees just like that. So 
it's not all about the weeds. We got to come through and um, get the trees getting ready to know. Hopefully next year we'll see some production off threes. I probably won't leave too many apples on this row, especially because we want that new growth. But on some of the other varieties, like we got some Fujis and some um, Liberty apples, they seem to be uh, very, very, very vigorous. So if you leave on those varieties, if you do leave a few apples in the um, second year, stops the growth. So on these varieties, I probably leave a few. But on those vigorous varieties, you want to leave more fruit so it can stop the vigorous growth, so the the, the tree won't be you know excessively vigorous. So just managing and knowing what variety are more vigorous than others. It's just you know experience experience is key in this point. So got to come through and uh, finish her up. And another thing I'm going to watch out with over here, whenever I'm try, if I can catch it and look up all the time, is right here, as you guys can see here, we have the main leader growing, grow, going forward. So I'm going to come through and chop those off so we get all the power going to the main leader instead of sharing that energy. So like on this one, find out which one is the longest. Cut that one out and cut that one out, just like that. And now the tree has all the energy goes to the main leader. We're trying to get this by the end of the second year. So you have to hit to the top wire, so and come through and just chop off most of that dead stuff there and have just like that then spot treat the like i told you guys i got to come through and retie these and probably just gonna order the clips tonight because these are just a pain if you don't have the clips so all right so i want to come in here and show you guys why it's very important to uh have a well, on the system to have a certain state because look at this the new growth is uh starting to lean over so what we got to do now is the plan is to finish putting the top wires. And what the pros do is they get a bamboo stick, a 10 foot bamboo stick, and they put it on this side of the wire, the trees are on that side, and they train the tree along the bamboo stick, just a central leader, to um, make it grow straight. But I just wanna show you guys, we, we might have to do that like, probably later on this year, because just look at this new growth and it's just gonna flop everywhere. And if there's an apple here next year, it's gonna to be too heavy and break it that way. So what we need is get get some of those bamboo sticks and you know stake them up nicely. But as this is these are a Fuji here, so they seem to be very vigorous. So this is why we need to either put the bamboo stake or just get a, a string from the top wire whenever it's up and come through and tie them and wrap them around, kind of like we did over here. As you guys can see here, what we did is we got a wire here or just a string and train it over there but full of ideas now we just gotta have time to time to do it so so just look at this one right here i don't understand how in the world can something grow that fast look at that that's 12 inches long and ever since we've just tied them down so it's just growing growing like crazy and uh the next step to do here is i gotta come buy some white latex paint i'm gonna show you guys and just come through and cover the white latex paint but it's going pretty smoothly i'm on my fifth row here getting stuff done pretty fast so let's just look at this tree something ate the bark i'm hoping it's not a weed eater but this has happened after i got done doing this but something munch on the bark here and the whole the tree pretty much if the cambium layer dies the whole tree dies because there's no more nutrients flowing up and down the tree so just look at this tree but then again i'm going to show you guys over here like i was explaining earlier on this this one right here this tree we put the string here because it was about right here and we want to get up so look at just look at just look at this amazing growth if the leader has somewhere to go or has a guide it's going to grow perfectly strong other than being like this one's right here whereas they don't have a guide you know they just kind of grow and flop everywhere like this one right here is kind of flopping so that's that's something we got to do pretty quick here is uh make sure they have a guide and because it makes them makes the new growth just straight up and more vigorous and look at the size of these leaves just beautiful 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 so yep yep so i don't know if you guys have the same problem in your area but we got this johnson grass i'll tell you what these rhizomes are getting me mad so that's johnson grass right there let me try to show you guys and these rhizomes right here they are small ones but these rhizomes they give out new growth wherever a new one is and you could have a piece of a rhizome on a piece of tire 
and you can still spread Johnson grass. So Johnson grass is a very obnoxious weed we deal with. And the cool thing about the weed kill we're using is that it kills the grass and the rhizomes, but since since the rhizomes already are already here, it you know they get on new growth. So hopefully in the next few years we won't have the problem anymore. But just you know, weed Johnson grass, that's probably our, our biggest weed or pest. Not really pest, but our biggest weed. So on uh so hopefully we're good thing hopefully the, the i know i know the weed killer we're using does kill it so johnson grass if you guys have that in the area let me know because it's a pain to get rid of first of all and the thing about us is we use turkey manure to fertilize and where the turkey farms are or a friend has this turkey farm they have a lot of johnson grass in that area so you know the johnson grass gets on their tires and the manure and then whenever we spread the manure it's it comes here so before we never had a problem with Johnson grass until we started spreading turkey manure and we're like hey since when when did all of a sudden we have a bunch of problem with the uh, Johnson grass and we tracked our tracked our uh, traces back and there we go we bring it in ourselves and then we cause ourselves more problem headache but hey when it comes to the money standpoint and the cost of fertilizer the turkey manure is well worth the money even though we're spending more time now to actually cut the grass or kill the grass it's still worth it because instead of spending you know five six thousand dollars a year on fertilizer even more you know you, you just haul it out here and the turkey manure is all nice and good so i got two more rows here to kill but the weed killer just pretty much spot treating it so right here like in between i'm not killing anything but yeah the high densities are looking very good and for the guy for the ones who are wondering if i'm a pro at high density apples no this is our uh, first first close that we have in a uh, thousand tree share the high density apples so we're i'm learning as i'm going and I don't know if I mentioned this, but the university in our area, Missouri State University, that's where I go to school. I actually start on Monday, so uh, anyways, they don't have any of the high density apples. They do they are they do have a fruit re, fruit research station about you know hour and 30 minutes away from here, southeast of here. But I was talking to the um, the, the horticultural department, the guy who was in charge of the, the horticulture department, and they said that the high density apples is just cost too much they can't get can't find the funds to you know actually build it because it does cost about 15 to 25 thousand dollars to build in depends what kind of post and what the kinds of rootstock you use and what kind of variety so that's why it, it you know it costs so much per acre but then the return on it, like i explained in my video a white plant high density apples the return is a whole lot better so i told me you know what you know i'll just do the, my own research on my own farm and then you guys you guys will come to me and take my research on and you know it's just but you know, if, if if we would have had someone in our area who actually had the research, it would have been a whole lot easier for us because you know we'll just go to them and ask them exactly what's going on. But you know, live and learn every day and being me being courageous, I was like told my dad, you know what, let's just try it. If we fail, we just lost twenty thousand dollars. But most likely it seems very promising in other states up north in the Apple State. So out in Washington, there's guys that, that are actually pushing thousands of acres and trees down of the traditional orchard type and actually planting this high density system because you're in production so much sooner and i mean it's just so much easier to work you're you got you know it's pedestrian free uh pedestrian friendly you know you don't need you know ladders anymore you know it's just you got them you got the platforms help them out help out you know we're not we're not we only have nine hundred thousand trees here so we don't we don't need the platforms and stuff but there's actually cool platforms and pruning shears and machines and it gets complicated but for now you know we're just trying to system out you know just trying on our, on our own skin and see if it works so far so good we are actually having pretty real good success with it so we'll see and that's why i'm taking you guys along with me to to actually you know see how everything goes i'm going to probably share all my results how many bushels to the acre probably hopefully next year we'll see some production off these and it's not the third year so it's just for now you know the dream you know is just you always have plans and dreams for the exciting for the future but for now we have to put we have to put in the work in so Got to finish putting killing all the weeds before it gets too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and take you guys along for this row at least. Hit the switch on there. And it's just a very simple process. Just come through and just like that. Four, seven. 7 to 14 days all this grass will be dead and so just right here just hit that hit that around the trees just like that try not to get any 
anything on the tree there it's tangled up right here I knew something was wrong and on this one this one it was tied too tight so it broke so I'm gonna have to cut that off pick that up put it in my back pocket here and it's just about to get that Johnson grass killed very obnoxious obnoxious grass just like that and on these ones as you guys can see here I did print off the tips whenever I was I was training them back early on so I'm not gonna have to worry about those too much so it's just So it, gets, it goes pretty quick, it doesn't take too long. And trying to save the chemical from actually, because that's the reason I'm spotting it, and not having it behind the tractor or the four-wheeler, it's actually save time and save, save chemical, so. And this is all GPS, highly advanced technology here, what I'm doing. I'm just messing around. It's basic, basic stuff. So as you can see here, it goes nice and quick. And these are pink lady trees on the G41 rootstock. So Geneva 41 rootstock. Johnson grass. Kill that Johnson grass. Boom, 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 boom. Yep, we got a dead limb right here. So we got 40 foot done in a matter of minutes. So I just got done spraying the bottom of all the trees here, 900 trees. It took about two hours. The sun's finally setting down now, but hopefully 10, seven to 14 hours, like I mentioned, seven to 14 days, everything, all the grass will be dead. And what I'm probably gonna do tomorrow or sometime this week is get that white latex paint and paint all, paint all the trunks of the trees. So they won't give out any more buds like these right here. So if you do spray, or uh, rub the white latex paint, all these buds will never bud out because they don't got no more sunlight. So it's just gotta come through with the glove and just put my hand in the paint and just kind of scrub everything up to this bottom line here, bottom wire so they won't, no more growth. So it's just, we got a lot of work out here, but slowly and surely we're gonna get it done. Alrighty y'all, that's gonna be pretty much it for today. We got the high, the weeds at the high density pretty much under control, or at least we just tried, but there's a lot more work we got to do, you know, to the high density to the orchard completely. But next week, like I mentioned, I'm starting, I'm going back to school. And uh, I, won't, I won't be putting in many hours here on the farm work. But, you know, I still got, still got to do the farmer's markets on the weekend and just doing stuff, you know, just still got to get stuff done. But, you know, got to get got to get that 20 credit hours, credit, doing 20 credit hours in so I can get my bachelor's in plant science. So it is what it is, you know, you can't, you can't change stuff now. So. That's gonna be pretty much it for today. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit, the, hit that subscribe button. Like this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Come, come you guys three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And um, if you don't forget to um, stay tuned for uh, Thursdays uh, live. It's gonna be 5 p.m. Central Time, Missouri Time. Now I just wanna get on there and ask you guys, you know, you guys are gonna ask me questions about me, the farm. Just, you know, try to do a live. I've never done a face a YouTube live. So it's just, you know, I want to see how it is. And I want you guys to be along for the ride. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and do all that good stuff. I want to say thanks for watching up to this point. You guys have a good day. And we'll see you next time.